In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And a very happy Easter to you as well. I've just been out in the garden. Bob, Bob has been a homing fish. He's found where the, the Alleluia box was that we buried at the beginning of Lent. And I've dug it up, and there it is. We're going to have a look at it later. And I know that Holly and her family have been talking to you a little bit earlier about the significance of Easter and the importance of the Paschal candle as well, which has been lit. Represents, as we know, Christ's light, his resurrection coming into the world. And this Mass, this Mass, I'm going to treat as one of our children's Masses. So I'm going to adapt it a little bit for our children in our parish who are watching today as well. We're going to begin, as we always do, by acknowledging what the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross has gained for us, which is forgiveness. So let's shut our eyes and reflect on our need of God's mercy, compassion and love in our lives. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. You shoulder the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Now I'm going to sing the Gloria, the clapping Gloria. I'm not going to clap, but I'm going to give you enough time at home to put your claps in at the chorus. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Lord God, heavenly King, peace you bring to us. We worship you, we give you thanks, we sing our song of praise. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Jesus, Saviour of all, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away our sins, O Lord, have mercy on us all. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. At the Father's right hand, Lord, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, and you alone are Lord. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory, Father and Son, glory, Holy Spirit, to you we raise our hands up high, we glorify your name. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. This Mass is being offered for all your intentions. So, St Mary's Parish, I think we're being joined by some of the parishioners from St John Fisher Parish in Shepparton, one of my old parishes, which I was very proud, like you, to be parish priest of, so welcome to them. And also for some of my family as well who are watching too. A happy Easter to all of you. We're all in it together. And this Mass is being offered for all your intentions today. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, 
have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we, may, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now, we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The Word of the Lord. The response this day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say his love has no end. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast then in the Lord. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John.
It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following now, came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head, since this was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, as I said, early this morning, me and Bob... Bob, my goldfish, of course we know he has that kind of skill of dolphins to, with his radar, to find things. And we had actually buried the Alleluia box that the children had designed and put little cards in at the beginning of Lent. We'd buried it by a water source, which was underneath the tap in the garden. And with Bob's help, he's a water diviner, I dug it up, the old spade there, and here is the box of Alleluia's. Of course, we weren't allowed to say the word Alleluia, praise him during Lent, but we can say it now because it's Easter time. So I haven't actually opened the box yet, so I just need to have a look inside just to see if everything is safe in there. And oh my gosh, crikey, actually, there's quite a little find in here. There are some flowers, springtime, new life. How wonderful is that? And for people like me and for children like me who who like chocolate, there's some chocolate eggs. People maybe who are a little bit lactose intolerant, there's some oranges, there's some satsumas, bit of fruit. And for those of you who are vegans, there's a potato. So all sorts of things for all of us to celebrate this wonderful day of Alleluia's, of Easter, of Christ rising from the dead. And more importantly in the box are all the cards that the children, you children, have written at the beginning of Lent, your intentions, your celebration, your words to encourage us on this beautiful day of Easter. So by tomorrow I'm going to decorate the garden there with all your words of alleluia, your words of celebration, your words of delight. This box reminds me of a story that I heard. This alleluia box reminds me of a story I heard that happened in Lourdes a few years ago. I'm going to tell it now. People of Shepparton know this story because when I first heard it, I mentioned it to them. Because as you know, tomorrow what would normally happen is children, special children of special needs would go off to Lourdes on an Easter pilgrimage. Thousands of them with helpers and priests and medical staff and they'd have a great week of celebration in Lourdes with Our Lady. And it was during one of these weeks that this remarkable story came out to all of us who are pilgrims on that particular year. And it was about a priest talking to his children, to the children in his group. And he was saying to them, I'm going to give you some egg boxes and I want you to go out into Lourdes and to fill the egg boxes with the things that you think represents Easter. So there was one particular child called Tom in that group. And Tom, really, the other children didn't warm to him for some reason. They didn't really get on with him, so he's a little bit out on his own, poor old Tom. But anyway, 
the children all went off with their empty egg boxes to find stuff that reminded them of Easter. So then they came back to the priest and one little child called Simon, he had filled his egg box with chocolate because of course, I don't know about you, but I've certainly got up this morning and I've eaten about three Easter eggs just in celebration of this day. How fantastic is that? I'm feeling a little bit hyper, I must admit, but nonetheless, I've got Easter eggs now to do me the rest of the day and Easter as well. I'm going to have a great time. So he filled his his box with Easter eggs, and then a girl called Lucy, she came back and she filled her egg box with spring flowers, which I just had a minute ago, and I put them back in our Alleluia box, spring flowers. And then another girl called Rita, she said that at Easter at home, she'd always get a bit of cash or always a bit of money. So she had filled her egg box with money. And then Tom came back, and everyone thought, he's going to come back with something a bit silly, not really relevant, not going to say much about Easter at all. And Tom had gone out, and he'd come back, and his egg box was empty. And when the priest asked him, couldn't you find anything? Tom said, well, that is the message of Easter, isn't it? That the tomb was empty that Jesus had risen again. Jesus was no longer in the tomb, but alive, resurrected. The message of Easter is about an empty tomb, just as my egg box is empty. And that really is the message of Easter, the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. And if you listen to that gospel and you compare it to Lazarus, Lazarus came out bound in bandages and cloths that they used to kind of decorate people when they died and put them into the tomb. And Jesus even leaves. We hear that in that gospel. Peter and John go in. They see that the linen cloths, those things used to decorate Jesus after he died, they were all just left there. He wasn't bound by anything. He had risen and he had gone. And what we'll hear in the week to come, which is a beautiful week, and we've got Mass every day at 10 o'clock, we're going to hear the resurrection appearances. And as I said last night, people don't recognise him when he comes. We need to explore that a little bit more as well. But for the time being, today is Easter Day, the day of the empty tomb, the day when we celebrate that Christ has resurrected, and we, we, all of us, inherit that resurrection as well. Alleluia. Praise. It is a great day. And I know that Holly spoke about the Paschal candle and the time that we get our little candles at baptism to remind us that we're going to be enlightened by this good news. This is the day to light our own baptismal candles. Now, I know that might be a bit treacherous and difficult. Some parents might be going, my gosh, well, be ready with some water, be ready with some sand, be ready with another adult to throw themselves on the child if things go aflame or stuff like that. But, well, we don't need to light them. We can find them and we can acknowledge that this is the day that we have been enlightened for, that we have been told about, that we can celebrate a day of Christ's resurrection and the promise of our resurrection too. Fantastic. We're going to continue. We're going to renew our baptismal promises. I mentioned baptism there when we get our baptismal candles. And so, my little family, people of St. Mary's, people of St. John Fisher, and anyone else who might be watching, I don't know, that New Zealand gaming community, you may be watching too as well. A chance to renew our baptismal promises. So, after I have said the questions, our answers are, I do. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we've been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. 
and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. We're going to continue now with our bidding prayers. Today we celebrate new life. Calvary was not the end, but rather the beginning of new life. There will be sunshine and gladness in our hearts again. The risen Jesus will walk with us in our present and into our future, whatever it might hold. And so we bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father, knowing that God's love is beyond anything we can ever imagine. Let us pray for Pope Francis and all religious leaders in their efforts to inspire hope and promise in the life of everyone in their care. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that the combined efforts of all governments and everyone working to control the spread of the COVID-19 virus will be successful and will save as many lives as possible. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that everyone who is in hospital, in quarantine, lockdown and self-isolation will find a cause for hope and celebration during a very difficult time in their own lives and those of the people whom they know and love. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that God will bless and reward all those essential key workers who may be risking their own health on our behalf filling them with the courage, strength, and perseverance that they need at this time. Lord, hear us. And let us pray for all of those who have died, for the bereaved, and for anyone who is anxious about what the future might hold, that the risen Lord will touch their hearts and fill them with new life. Now on this day, I never mention names because I think we're praying for all of our loved ones who have died, those recently and those who we know whose deaths have been a little while ago as well and deserve our prayers. So let's pray for them now. It is a celebration in eternity and we join them in that celebration during this Mass. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And we join our prayers with Our Lady, Queen of Heaven, as we greet her, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And in silence and quiet, wherever we are, let's pray for our own needs and intentions. Lord God, fill us with the new life and light of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, and the comfort of your Holy Spirit of love. Amen. I'm going to use the children's Eucharistic prayer during this Mass. So children, again, you're going to need to help me as I say this prayer.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, God our Father. You are the living God. You have called us to share in your life and to be happy with you forever. You raised up Jesus, your Son, the first among us to rise from the dead and gave him new life. You have promised to give us new life also, a life that will never end, a life with no more anxiety and suffering. And so, Father, we gladly thank you with everyone who believes in you, with the saints and the angels. We rejoice and praise you, acclaiming, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yes, Lord, you are holy. You are kind to us and to all. For this we thank you. We thank you above all for your Son, Jesus Christ. He brought us the good news of life to be lived with you forever in heaven. He showed us the way to that life, the way of love. He himself has gone that way before us. He now brings us together to one table and asks us to do what he did. Father, we ask you to bless these gifts of bread and wine by the power of the Holy Spirit and make them holy. Change them for us into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. On the night before he died for us, he had supper for the last time with his disciples. He took bread, gave you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took a chalice of wine. He gave you thanks and handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And so we remember that during the rest of this Eucharistic prayer I will need your help and so we're going to say, we praise you, oh, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you. I'll have to remind myself. We praise you, we bless you, we thank you. God our Father, we remember with joy all that Jesus did to save us. In this holy sacrifice, which he gave as a gift to his church, we remember his death and resurrection. Father in heaven, receive us together with your beloved Son. He willingly died for us, but you raised him to life again. And so we say, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you. Jesus now lives with you in glory, but he is also here on earth among us. One day he will come in glory, and in his kingdom there will be no more suffering, no more sadness, no more tears. And so we say, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you. Father in heaven, you have called us to receive the body and blood of Christ at this table and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Through this sacred meal, give us strength to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember Francis our Pope, Vincent our Bishop and all other bishops. And so we say, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you. Fill all Christians with the gladness of Easter. Help us to bring this joy to all who are sorrowful. Bring us all at last, together with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, to live with you and to be one with Christ in heaven. And so we say, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to join as one big family now. We're going to join those of you from St John Fisher in Shepparton. Wonderful parish. And also this wonderful parish of St. Mary's in East Finchley, both brilliant parishes. One day you're going to get to meet and also my wonderful family as well. And so as one gigantic family on this Easter day, we reach our hearts across to each other and together at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord 
be with you always. And so now, wherever we are, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now at this point, you say your prayer of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favour, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. So, as I said last night, is that 
this point that the parish priest thanks all of those people who've supported him since Christmas to Easter. And there's all of you, all of you, by your prayers, who've supported me, those of that wonderful parish of St. Mary's here in East Finchley. I'm so grateful for your support and care and tolerance of me as well. A happy Easter to you. There's a long list of people within the parish I'd really like to thank, but some of them aren't able to tune in via a computer uh, today. They're the non-computer community. So I'm going to leave that thanks until we're all gathered once again here in the church in the very near future, which I can't wait to see. But I do need to thank those who have been so instrumental in enabling this to happen, our streaming service, which actually is a technical wonderment because it's way above my head. And the two individuals who have been really key to this actually happening are Peter Murphy, a young man in the parish, absolutely brilliant with his technical know-how, his calm way that he's got us through some real glitches at times and we've wondered if we've been able to stream masses because all of this is actually coming through my mobile phone. It's quite remarkable. And then, of course, the wonderful virtual Holly as well. Just all the work that she's done, not only with Peter setting up this streaming service, but also through her liturgies for our parish children as well. And to thank her children as well for being part of that, the old Graham Academy there, that Graham Liturgical Academy that's leading our children in that wonderment and delight in this particular period, this festival of Easter as well. And then Yvonne, Yvonne who works keeping me calm, doing the administration, and also she is the one who's being responsible for keeping in contact with the non-computer community as well. We're sending out mailings all the time to them. And over the next couple of days, we can continue to speak to them over the telephone as well, to reassure them that we're all praying at the same time at 10 o'clock on Sundays, and now 10 o'clock, of course, during the rest of the week as well. So those three I'd like to thank. I'd also like to thank taller Peter Murphy as well. I'll call, it, I'll call him taller keeping an eye on the hall and all of those in the parish who have been so generous, not only in volunteering, but also in helping to coordinate the food bank as well, and all of you who have been so generous in providing food for the food bank too. We would now prefer food rather than money because food we can readily and quickly give out. And so in that newsletter I would have sent to you via email you'll see a little list of goodies that would be useful for those who are a bit more vulnerable at this time. If you're watching this Mass and you're from St Mary's and I haven't got your email address, please send it to me, peterscott at rcdow.org.uk. I do wish you all a very, very happy and blessed Easter today. Lovely for me because I'm going to go back now. I've got about 15 more eggs, 15 more chocolate eggs to eat, and I'm going to get through them, me and Bob, during the day. So it's going to be a fantastic chocolatey day. Wonderful day and really celebrating the Lord's resurrection. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock as we learn more, more visible appearances of Jesus after his resurrection to his apostles and disciples. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Better take the spade. It's not a good look on the sanctuary. <laughs>